These dudes went scoreless, and I love this on True TV. They went score. I've never seen this in a basketball game before. <laughs> I've never seen this before. First Leave time since we flipped to March. <laughs> Leave it to True TV to give me something I ain't never seen before. Virginia went scoreless from 9.48 p.m. Eastern to 10.40 p.m. Eastern. 52 minutes. These dudes couldn't score points. They went 0 of 19 in that 52-minute stretch of basket. They 52-minute stretch of real time. They went 0 of 19. They had 14 points with 16.38 left in the second half. They went 52 minutes of real time without scoring. Do you realize if you have an erection as long oh my God. as long as if you have an erection as long as Virginia went last night without scoring, you need to consult a doctor. Do you understand that? Well, I want to give you a ton of credit because we are definitely not on CBS Sports Network right now. Past two shows have been. Hope people have been enjoying that on uh, on TV. And then we are giving you those uh, those TV shows in the pod feed. <laughs> but Paris, just waste no time getting my consult a doctor. Consult a doctor to the selection committee. On Virginia for the final time. Wrong, 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 wrong. What are we doing wrong, here? Wrong, okay. Wrong, wrong. No, 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 no. That was brutal, man. And I take no joy in seeing Virginia look that terrible. I want a good game. I want a good game. I want a better team in the field. I'm going to take and give me Indiana State. They were getting a lot of love. Oklahoma, I believe, was the first team out. St. John's Providence, by the way, lost to BC in the NIT. Good times. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, Tony Bennett is now gone five years without winning a tournament game. No, there was no tournament in 2020. Uh, this one was bad. Last year was a fluke ending against Furman. Really uh, just a lightning bolt of an ending there and, uh, and a great tournament moment. But, yeah, didn't have the offense. Colorado State avoids getting virginia And I don't know what else to say. It, they, they didn't belong in the field. They didn't look like they had belonged in the field. They've been asked lately, T-ball score, just breaking through the ceiling here. And they did nothing to dispel that notion on national TV last night. In, uh, in a game that didn't even come close to the entertaining value of Wagner versus Howard. Congrats to the Seahawks and Donald Copeland, Jay-Z fan, for moving on to Thursday. I have, uh, I have said in the past that anything that happens after Selection Sunday has no impact on what should have happened on Selection Sunday. So, like, if you see an eight seed go to the Final Four, it doesn't mean they were underseeded necessarily. It just means that sometimes stuff like that happens. I think this is the exception to that rule. This is one. I don't want to say everybody had them out because the stupid committee had them in. But like a lot of people stood up on Sunday and said, why is Virginia in this tournament? 18 spots lower than any other at-large team in the field at Ken Palm. 18 spots lower. Like you're looking and you're like, okay, there's this team. Look, where is the next one? Oh, Virginia, way down here. They're so far below every other at-large team. They went four and five in their previous nine games heading into the NCAA tournament. They couldn't correct 50 points in four of their previous eight games. Jerry Palm on Sunday, depressed as he could be because he missed two, just like me. You got to understand, this guy spends every day for five months trying to project a bracket. I spend seven minutes on Selection Sunday. We get the same thing. All right. Hold on. You're doing bracketology in your top 25 and one every day for three and a half months. Don't I just know. say you're boiling it down. And you're you're calling yourself what you're you're a boiler maker. You're coming for Paul's head. Just admit what's going on here. You're wait the boiler I, maker. He went to Purdue. You know what's going on. Wait till I grow my bangs out. Then it's over. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to see that. Then it's over. And, it's hold over on, hold on. And we are on a time limit today, so we got to keep moving. I am begging anyone that listens to this show that has legit podcast skills to Photoshop Jerry Palm's bangs on Parrish's face. Send I, it to me, please. I, I'm, I'm, I'm already part boiler maker. I'm also part Aggie. That round of 32 match is going to break my heart, but I am part boiler maker. I'm, I'm, I'm a part time bracketologist. And if I get some bangs, it's over for Jerry Palm. That's where we're at. All right. But Jerry Palm, depressed as I've ever seen him on Selection Sunday. He was like, well, you know, I see. I guess you could see this. And then we got to Virginia. And you know what he's you know what he told Britt Stover, Adam Zucker, Keanu Martin, whoever he was talking to? You know what he said? I would have never had Virginia in this field. Often I can see it. I can go, well, yeah, I should have probably had that one. I would have never gotten to a point where I said, maybe I should put Virginia in this field. So when you have one of the biggest bracket projectors in the world saying there's, I could look at it for another week and I would never reach that conclusion. And then Virginia comes out and does what it did last night. That's an indictment of the committee. And I asked you yesterday on CBS sports network, has the shine come off this Virginia thing a little bit? Because it is true. It'll be March, 2025. And Tony Bennett at the best is going to be looking for his first NCAA tournament win since 
since 2019. He beats Texas Tech in, uh, in on April 8th, 2019 to win the national championship. And since then, we've had a canceled tournament in 2020, lost Ohio in the first round in 2021, missed the NCAA tournament in 2022, lost to Furman in the first round in 2023, got blasted by Colorado State in the first round in 2024. Can I ask you again, has the shine come off this thing a little bit? Uh, just a little bit. Um, yeah, if you look at the the tournaments before that, obviously, as well. Yeah, they're just a little. But you know what? If you're a Virginia fan, you're trading it anyway. Like, it sucks to live in the moment now, but you've got a national championship. You were able to do it. Uh, you've had some really, really good years. Over the past decade, Tony Bennett, his win percentage and his dominance in the ACC uh, supersedes every single coach in that conference. So, yeah, it does stink. You did make the tournament, even if it was criticized and believed that shouldn't be the case by uh, the overwhelming majority. And you want to see where the program can pivot moving forward and not have to endure this anymore. But if I give you the option, okay, hey, listen, you can make three Final Fours and a pair of Sweet 16s, but not win a national championship, or you win a title and then you go five years, five out of six tournaments without winning a game. Virginia fans are taking the ladder every single time. You want the national title, a little bit of a shine come off. We'll see how Tony Bennett adjusts moving forward in this NIL era, which, you know, he's not, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't hate. He just doesn't love. I've talked to him about this before. I talked about it with him last summer. Um, it's just, you know, it's, for him personally, I think it's uh, it's a little challenging to uh, to navigate. And that's, you know, not necessarily to his detriment. Uh, he's he's trying, but Virginia is also a hard school to get into. And I think that is a prime example of a high major program that was really uh, cooking in a lot of ways. And still in some ways, it's it's he's still getting into the tournament. They haven't fallen off. We're not talking about a 15-win team here. But on the biggest stage, they've fallen flat, so... Maybe a little bit for for a national audience, but for Virginia fans, you know, yeah, they're not happy, but they're taking the title every time. Yeah, and, um, you know, that was, and maybe what does this say about the ACC, and then we'll move on. Um, even if Virginia hasn't won an instantly tournament game since 2019, you ready for this? Virginia has won two of the past four ACC regular season titles. Mm -hmm. So a team that has won two of the past four ACC regular season titles ain't won an NCAA tournament game since 2019. And a team that finished alone in third in the ACC standings this season just got blasted by 25 by a team that finished tied for six in the Mount West this season. You could take that for whatever is worth. Just know that it's true. Let's move on.